head in a tapestry, though its color brightly shine. Can never see its purpose in the pattern of the grand design. And the stone that sits on the very top of the mountain's mighty face doesn't think it's more important than the stones that form the base. So how can you see what your life is worth or where your value lies? You can never see through the eyes of man. You must look at your life. Look at your life through heaven's eyes. Good morning, Discovery, and a special good morning to Mike Barrett. What you just listened to was Through Heaven's Eyes from the Prince of Egypt, and that comes with a very special hello from Mike's family. Well, good morning, Mike, and uh, thanks to my crazy, wonderful family. It's great to be back in space again, and I uh, wish everybody could see what we're seeing through our eyes up here, too, as well. And I uh, look forward to working with you today. Thanks, Mike, and uh, congratulations from all of us down here to uh, you and uh, your crewmates for making it to orbit. Hey, Steve, uh, we're getting ready to do our handover uh, down here from Orbit 3 to Orbit 1. You guys can start your day. Uh, but uh, also wanted to let you know we're having a very nice ceremony down here for Mike Marsh, who's uh, celebrating his 119th shuttle mission that he's working as GC here in the White Ficker. Mike, first of all, you know it's uh, it's a it's a great milestone for you uh, to celebrate all these missions you've done. According to my information, you have uh, participated in supporting every single shuttle mission we have ever flown, which starts all the way back to STS-1. I won't tell you where I was when STS-1 launched, but uh, um, congratulations on working all those as a as a as a ground controller for shuttle ops and. Uh, Mike, on behalf of the crew, we really, really appreciate all your hard work down there. Um, you know, seeing your faces when we walk in there and, and uh, knowing you guys are working, it makes us feel real confident up here. So uh, congratulations to you, and uh, and I know that uh, you wouldn't be as big of a success if you didn't have a great family standing behind you. So congratulations to all of you as well. First of all, let me say this is a great honor. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here and be a part of this program. Uh, um, and this ceremony is just overwhelming. Uh, my family's here and all of uh, management, and and I am just truly overwhelmed. This I, I love this business. I love working here, and I love working with all of you, everybody here on the ground and every, in the air. Thank you very much. You bet, Mike, and uh, again, congratulations to you uh, on on uh, on being there for the program. You know, you you go around this program and you see you see people everywhere that have been working in this program for many years. Not a, not too many worked it from STS one, but uh, there's still quite a few out there that have done that as well. And uh, you know, I'm just looking out the window here, going over the earth, uh, like right over the middle of Africa right now, and thinking about how cool it is to be up here doing this. But what's even more impressive to me about the whole uh, space flight business is when you have a large team like we have doing something incredibly complex that most people don't understand how complex it really is, and yet we uh, we pull it off uh, successfully year after year, mission after mission, and uh, and all the stuff that you guys do on the ground to make it all seem seamless to us. So uh, uh, it's a good once in a while, I think, for all of us to kind of step back and think about what we're really doing, and because uh, we're we're a, a set of very few people in the world that ever get to do this. Thank you very much. This is the flight deck uh, looking there on the far right hand side at the pilot Eric Bow. The crew is getting ready to conduct a uh, course correction burn. This will adjust Discovery's velocity by 10.3 feet per second. The crew has had a very busy morning so far. They've got an even busier day ahead as they get ready to not only conduct uh, a couple of these course correction burns, but also this orbiter boom sensor system survey today. Uh, we'll start off with the right wing, the starboard wing, then move that orbiter boom sensor system over to the nose cap, and then finally wrap up with the port wing on the left-hand side. All of these images will be downlinked to the team here in Houston. They'll take a look at them over the next couple of days to make sure that Discovery's 
thermal protection system and namely those uh, forward portion of the wings and that uh, reinforced carbon carbon that's on the front part of the nose cap has uh, fared well during yesterday's launch. 10 seconds to go. Discovery's orbital maneuvering system engine is burning. You saw the uh, slight shaking there of the camera as we take a look at uh, the pilot, Eric Bowe. There on the right-hand side of the cockpit inside Discovery, watching over uh, this engine as it uh, burns down. Good burn, discovery, no further trim required. Copy. Crew adjusting the camera there on board the uh, flight deck of Discovery. You see Al Drew there on the uh, far left hand side. Steve Lindsay there in uh, close up as he uh, gets the camera secured back to uh, that portion of the flight deck. Now that this uh, engine burn has been concluded successfully, the crew is going to turn their attention over to this orbiter boom sensor system survey. This is going to take about six hours to complete, which will take up the majority of the crew's day. You see Nicole Stott there uh, floating through. At this point, the shuttle's robotic arm is still uh, hovering above where it is normally stowed on the uh, left-hand side of the shuttle's payload bay, that's the port side. They're going to steer it here in a few minutes to reach over and grab onto this OBSS, which is a 50-foot-long uh, attachment that goes on the end of that robotic arm. They will uh, lift it up out of its cradle, uh, perform a quick checkout to make sure that it's uh, powered up. All the different uh, cameras and sensors on the end of it are operating as expected. Uh, we've got IME Star of Opportunity line coming up in the CDR column. Hold off on that for a moment uh, until we get good stars. We'll see what the maneuver brings us. And uh, we're still with you on the flight deck, enjoying the view. The KFX card, we've got the images, so you go to remove it. Okay, copy all that, Steve. The very... Uh tip end of the shuttle's robotic arm there at the top center portion of your screen. There at the bottom is the uh, target for that arm. That is the end of the orbiter boom sensor system attachment. Houston, we're on page 7-4 of PRS. We think we have everything configured correctly before we grapple, but if that's at the top of the page, if you'd give us the go, if you see the APC in a good config. Discovery Houston, PDRS, uh, Eric. PDRS book page 7-4 on the top. Those three checks uh, have com been confirmed by us, so you're going to continue. With the uh, arm in motion now as the crew gets ready to attach the robotic arm onto the orbiter boom sensor system to uh, get this survey underway. As Discovery flies about 150 miles above Africa, you can see that the orbiter boom sensor system attachment that's on the end of the shuttle's robotic arm has been uh, lifted up out of the right side cradle of Discovery's payload bay. It is now in what they call the hover position. They will begin by taking a look at the uh, starboard wing first, that's the right wing. They're also going to be taking a look at uh, some of the umbilical areas which uh, the uh, shuttle is attached to during the final moments of countdown and become released uh, after liftoff. Those are toward the uh, tail of the shuttle. While Discovery's crew is uh, getting this orbiter boom sensor system survey underway, there's a special guest here inside Mission Control right now. Astronaut Tim Copra is uh, in here talking with the uh, flight directors, including Brian Lunny, 
And uh, back at the back is Tony Sicacci, who will be the entry flight director, as well as Norm Knight. Copra is uh, going to be on console during the spacewalks that Al Drew and Steve Bowen will be conducting. Uh, there's two of them that will take place during the uh, middle portion of this mission. And uh, since Copra was uh, very familiar with the procedures, he helped write them. Uh, he's going to be on console in the station flight control room, uh, helping the crew work through all the different paces of these two spacewalks. Houston Discovery, how do you like this view? One half crosshair down, please. One half crosshair down, and we're happy. And Discovery Houston for CDR. Uh, no hurry, but we've got a uh, special guest in the uh, in the room that would like to uh, pass on greetings. He's getting himself pretty up. Well, he'll be up in a second. See you, Ray. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, tell him it's MS2 version one. Okay. He'll put less effort into the makeup then. Hey, Steve. Uh, Tim, I just wanted to tell you guys you all had an awesome launch, and we're all very proud of you down here. Uh, great to hear your voice, Tim. I wish you were here because I'd send you on the hunt for the overlay that I'm missing. But uh, anyway, appreciate the good words. It was a great launch. Uh, can't tell you how much we wish you were here with us as well. Well, I'm sure you, you know that I feel the same way, but I definitely feel like I'm there in spirit, and uh, I'm especially looking forward to seeing Steve and Al go out the door and, and do great work. Thank, thank you very much, Tim, and uh, we really appreciate you uh, being willing to go on console and help us out during the EVAs. My pleasure. Enjoy watching you guys. Keep up the great work. Hi, Timmy. It's Nicole. I just want to say I love you, and uh, like Steve said, we wish you were here, but we are also very happy that you'll be uh, supporting us from the ground, and I look forward to talking to you on EVA days. Love you back, and uh, it's going to be a, a great couple of EVAs. Hey, Tim, it's Mike. Uh, we miss your booming zero-G laughter up here, and I'll have to tell you that you're here in a little bit more than spirit, but we'll have to explain that when we get back. Well, I'm looking forward to that, Mike. It's great to hear your voice. All right, man. Uh, you keep watching us, and we'll try to do our best for you and make you proud with the plan that you came up with. Sounds good. Take care of those elements, moving them with the arm. Let us know if we're screwing up. Will do. Uh, all right, Discovery, just goes to show you have a seven-person crew. They're just not all up there with you. Absolutely. This is Mission Control Houston. We want to step away for, uh, from the OBSS inspection for a few minutes and show you this live video on board the International Space Station. The crew is uh, opening up the uh, Kepler automated transfer vehicle. It arrived at the station yesterday, docked uh, shortly before Discovery's liftoff. But it is uh, bringing up uh, several tons of supplies for the crew. It is installed on the uh, back end of the Russian segment, the Zvezda service module. But the uh, crew is busy opening it up and uh, going inside. They've uh, put on some masks a few minutes ago. This is standard protocol. Anytime they open up a new uh, piece of the station or any kind of vehicle, uh, they greet them. All that is to do is to uh, protect them from any sort of uh, dust or debris that could uh, come loose during the uh, launch and uh, ascent of that vehicle. And of course it would float up in the weightlessness of space, but uh, they've uh, cleared the environment. Alexander Clary there is uh, preparing the hatch in between the two vehicles. That uh, ATV was used this morning to reboost the station's altitude by 1.1 statute miles. That took place at 4.33 a.m. Central Time. The crew's going to be very busy not only with this STS-133 mission, but also unloading all the different cargo inside ATV over the next several days and weeks. So looks Krupochka there. Okay. It's 
huge. It is totally huge. What do you think, fella? There's Expedition 26 Commander Scott Kelly there inside. You get a sense of exactly how big this ATV actually is. It's uh, it's enormous. This place is giant. This is all Katie stuff. And oh, when is this on Doc? June? Maybe five months? Probably six months. Okay, if I remember correctly, this guy goes here. На переходнике остановится. Так, ЛГС отключена. Отключена на один год. Схема мотализации. Включить перемычки. Рисунок 2 ТС. 2 ТС. Перемычки. Так, одна перемычка идет. FPP. This is Mission Control Houston once again. We're watching playback from the Expedition 26 crew as they opened up the ATV uh, that docked with the station yesterday. They are uh, already busy getting everything moved out of it and uh, get all the cargo unloaded and stored inside the space station complex. Houston Discovery for EVA. Are we talking EVA on air to ground too, guys? Uh, yes, we are. Okay, go ahead. Uh, e, uh, EMU checkout prep complete and moving on to EMU checkout. Copy. Thanks, Steve. Well, this survey of the orbiter boom sensor system in the left wing of shuttle Discovery continues. The uh, crew inside uh, rapidly moving through the steps to get the uh, two space suits that Al Drew and Steve Bowen will be using, uh, checked out. Those are going to be moved across the hatchways uh, after docking tomorrow. As we take a live look outside of Discovery's payload bay, taking a look at uh, that robotic arm with the orbiter boom sensor system attached at the end of it, the crew is steadily working through this port wing survey. Commander Steve Lindsay and pilot Eric Bow are now maneuvering the robotic arm to put the OBSS back onto the uh, starboard sill of the payload bay and uh, complete today's operation. This view comes from a camera on the robotic arm, on the uh, elbow of the arm. Looking down the uh, forearm, you can see the, uh, the end effector where it is, uh, has a grip on the uh, end of the OBSS. And as uh, Lindsay and Bo get it lined up, they'll be uh, lowering the OBSS back into uh, a set of cradles along that starboard side of the sill. Today's inspection all went without any, uh, without any hitches. There were no reports of any problems with the uh, systems as the inspection was conducted uh, to include the starboard wing, the port wing, and the nose cap, as well as the ohms pods and uh, associated areas of the uh, heat shield tiles, and uh, to at least the untrained eye, there was no indication uh, seen of any areas of the uh, thermal protection system that had suffered any damage. 